Polyurethane and polyurea spray-on linings are used in many ways to protect products that we use every day from excessive wear and damage. As a lining application specialist, you're helping to deliver quality products that are important for your customers and your business. But more important is your personal safety on the job. Polyurethane and polyurea protective liner systems are made by combining an isocyanate such as MDI with a polyol resin blend that may contain a mixture of several chemical ingredients. These materials require you to follow defined precautions and procedures and to use specialized personal protective equipment or PPE to protect yourself and your co-workers from becoming overexposed to these components. This program provides general guidance for how to safely apply spray-on lining systems. It's intended for professional applications and is a supplement to other job safety information you already have or will be receiving and is not intended to replace any other safety training or information your employer has provided or will provide such as specialized training, material safety data sheets, product label information, and other materials. Always follow the specific instructions provided by your employer and the MSDS. Let's start by learning about the potential effects of overexposure to isocyanates. It's possible to come in contact with isocyanate by breathing it or getting it on your skin or in your eyes and by swallowing it. If you are spraying isocyanates, it's possible to become overexposed by breathing in airborne isocyanate. If you feel short of breath, begin coughing or develop chest tightness while spraying, stop work immediately and proceed to an area with fresh air. This could be a reaction to the isocyanate. Report these symptoms to your supervisor and seek medical attention. You should know that if you become overexposed to isocyanates, respiratory sensitization may occur. Sensitization is an allergic reaction, which is similar to an asthmatic reaction. A reaction could occur as soon as you begin to work with the product, or it could occur later, even after you've left the work site. If you experience symptoms of sensitization, such as coughing, chest tightness or discomfort, and difficulty breathing, do not continue working with isocyanates. Asthma attacks can be life-threatening. Seek immediate medical attention. It's possible that an isocyanate could come in contact with your skin or eyes when handling or spraying an isocyanate-based protective lining. Repeatedly getting isocyanates on your skin may result in discoloration, redness, and possibly skin sensitization. Animal tests and other research indicate that skin contact may result in respiratory sensitization. If you get isocyanates on your skin, thoroughly wash the affected area with mild soap and warm flowing water as soon as possible after contact. Do not use solvents to wash the affected area. They may cause more damage. If the skin irritation persists, seek medical attention. Getting isocyanates in your eyes can be painful and could result in tearing and irritation. If you get isocyanates in your eyes, immediately wash them in an emergency eye wash fountain or other appropriate water source for at least 15 minutes. Then seek immediate medical attention. To help avoid accidental ingestion of isocyanates, do not eat, drink, apply cosmetics, or use tobacco products in or near your workstation. If you accidentally ingest isocyanates, do not induce vomiting. Wash out your mouth with water and seek immediate medical attention. Before beginning work, always consult the product manufacturer's material safety data sheets, product labels, 
and your employer's workplace safety program as your first source of information and instruction. You also should review applicable OSHA standards and other applicable federal, state, and local regulations. A well-designed spray enclosure with a ventilation system and exhaust filtering can help reduce the risk of chemical overexposure. Here are some general guidelines for spray enclosures. Generally, spray enclosures can be made in three different manners. As a rigid enclosure, as a non-rigid enclosure, or as a built-to-suit apparatus designed for an applicator's specific needs. A regular maintenance program can be helpful in maintaining an effective enclosure. Here's a few things to consider. Verify that the spray enclosure is drawing clean air in from outside the enclosure. If filters are used at the air intake, change them periodically for continued effectiveness. Check the condition and proper placement of the exhaust and filters. Position exhaust away from the air intakes to help prevent re-entrainment. Clean the fan blades and intake housing. Check for unwanted openings, for example, tears or rips in the enclosure. Make sure the enclosure's doors shut properly. For non-rigid and some built-to-suit enclosures, observe the enclosure's walls to verify that they are visibly pulled slightly inward, never billowing outward toward the exterior. Performing a smoke test will help confirm that air is flowing from outside, through the enclosure, and then through the exhaust vent. Now we'll turn our attention to using Personal Protective Equipment, or PPE. PPE requirements are established by OSHA, and your employer also may have specific policies you need to follow. By taking proper precautions and using PPE, you can help protect yourself from overexposure to isocyanates. For tasks that do not include spraying, but where you could have direct contact with isocyanates at room temperature, such as equipment cleaning, personnel will typically wear protective eyewear, such as safety glasses with side shields or monogoggles, isocyanate-resistant chemical gloves, isocyanate-resistant protective clothing, such as an apron or coveralls, and safety shoes or boots. When involved in tasks where you might be exposed to isocyanate vapors or mists, such as spraying an isocyanate-based protective liner system, your company may recommend that your personal protective equipment include an approved supplied air respirator as outlined in your company's respiratory protection program, isocyanate-resistant chemical gloves, isocyanate-resistant long-sleeve coveralls or full body suit with hood, and isocyanate-resistant fitted boots or booties that cover footwear. No one should be in the spray enclosure except for appropriately trained workers wearing proper PPE until the airborne isocyanate concentration is below the allowable levels. Now, here are some key points on how to wear and inspect a respirator. A supplied air respirator provides a fresh air supply to workers through either a hooded, loose-fitting headpiece or a tight-fitting face piece, both of which receive air through hoses that are connected to an external air supply source. With any external air supplied system, the air quality must be maintained and the system must be used as designed by its manufacturer. Before you can use a respirator or be fit tested, OSHA requires that you first undergo medical evaluation and approval. 
ask your employer about getting this done. In addition, OSHA requires employers to provide annual respiratory protection training for employees required to wear respiratory protection. If you've been assigned to wear a tight-fitting face piece, you must first have a fit test using the respirator of the same make, model, and size that you will be wearing on the job. This is needed to determine whether you have a protective seal. OSHA requires fit testing to be repeated annually. Further, when using a tight-fitting face piece, OSHA requires that you conduct a user seal check each time you wear it to verify that the face piece is properly seated to the face. However, you may not use a tight-fitting face piece if you have any condition that interferes with either the respirator's sealing surface or its function, such as facial hair or scarring. Remember to regularly clean and disinfect respirators according to the manufacturer's instructions. Before each use, inspect it and replace any deteriorated parts. For example, inspect the face mask for cracks tears, holes, distorted face mask, and cracked or loose lenses or face shield. Inspect the fastening system for breaks, tears, broken buckles or straps, and overstretched or worn out elastic head straps. Inspect the valves for residue, dirt, cracks or tears, and properly working valve flaps. Check the source of the breathing air to be sure it is correct for your use and that it's being maintained at the respirator manufacturer's recommended pressure level. Finally, inspect the supply hoses, hose connections, and the regulator and valve settings. If you discover that any part of the respirator has defects or the respirator is not fit for use, immediately take the respirator out of service and notify your supervisor. Now, let's observe a typical isocyanate-based spray-on protective lining application. We'll see an application of a truck bed liner using proper ventilation, personal protective equipment, and precautionary spraying techniques. The spray enclosure's ventilation system is turned on before spraying. Typically, a minute or two is sufficient. Before spraying, the applicator is positioned upstream from the spray mist. Try not to stand between the spray nozzle and the enclosure's exhaust vent, as demonstrated in this drawing. Containing the overspray during application will help to minimize exposure to isocyanates. Remember, Never begin spraying until the ventilation system is turned on and working properly, and all applicators are wearing the proper PPE. Work with your employer to determine the length of time to keep running your facility's ventilation system after spraying has stopped. You should only remove personal protective equipment after you have exited the spray enclosure. Following proper removal procedures helps you to avoid direct exposure to isocyanate residue that may have collected on your PPE. Begin by removing the first layer of gloves using the following procedure. Pull one glove near your wrist toward your fingertips until the glove folds over. Carefully grab the fold and pull toward your fingertips. As you pull, you are turning the inside of the glove outward. Pull the fold until the glove is almost off. To avoid contaminating your environment, continue to hold the removed glove and completely remove your hand from the remaining glove. Remove your respirator's protective face piece or hood. Remove your protective footwear. And then remove your protective coveralls.
Finally, remove your second set of protective gloves using the procedure previously outlined. Remove and properly dispose of any isocyanate contaminated clothing. Isocyanate contaminated leather items such as shoes, belts, watch bands, or clothing cannot be decontaminated. Discard these in accordance with your company's waste disposal program. Store chemicals, for example, isocyanates and polyol resins, in clean, closed, well-labeled containers, and store the containers at the manufacturer's recommended temperature. With your employer's approval, incidental spills of isocyanates may be handled by qualified site personnel within the immediate area of the release who have received proper instruction. However, fires, significant spills, and other emergencies involving isocyanates require immediate response by trained emergency personnel. Remember, there is no substitute for knowing and using safe work practices. Knowing the risks and rules and working safely is up to you. By taking necessary precautions and following proper safety procedures, these products can be applied safely. Always consult the product manufacturer's material safety data sheets, product labels, and your employer's workplace safety program as your first source of information and instruction. You should also review applicable OSHA standards and other applicable federal, state, and local regulations. Additional information about isocyanates can be found on the American Chemistry Council's Center for the Polyurethanes Industry website.